a sort of haven of Elvis deathabilia. Uh, we investigated the deathabilia fairly thoroughly, or as thoroughly as we possibly could, and there's most astounding things that you wouldn't have anything to do. Well, there's all the stuff that you would imagine have something to do with Elvis, and a whole lot of other stuff that you wouldn't imagine, but it just has a picture of a coon on it, and a price tag on it, so people buy it. But not, I hasten to add, either me or Swarp, except that Swarp did buy three pictures of Elvis's front gate after we'd investigated it really thoroughly. And that was all that was worth buying, according to him. But um, you're, right, you're going to ask yourself what the hell this has got to do with this song. But um, I've been droning on today for some, at some length about how this particular song needed, really needed different words. Because it was a song we used to do a long time ago, and when we started doing our farewell tours, it seemed to be appropriate to do it again. But the words, like I say, needed um, uh, thought. And uh, after we'd done the de done the deathabilia stands, um, we walked away, and I said to him, Apro apropos of nothing, I really do think those that song needs some words, and we ought to think about it quite hard. And he said to me, Well, why didn't you find a nice quiet corner of the airport and work on them? At least that was the gist of what he said. No, I did. If you want to sing, feel free. If you want to sing, feel free. If you don't, also feel free. Then they 
dressed as in all of their merchandise had a logo all over me hat. It said poverty rising above the time, but the others all thought it said Pratt. And the begging I will go, and the begging I will go. can live so well and the begging I will go and the begging I will go from a great Victorian value on enterprise poverty completely invisible to the state and there for all to see and the begging I will go and the begging I will go Oh, all the train.
is in her basket. It comes from a recording that was um, found. Well, they knew the re recording was there, but nobody had no, nobody had played it for I don't know how long. Um, it was on a wax cylinder stuck in a box for about 40 years in uh, a corner of Cecil Sharp House, which is the headquarters of the English Folk Dance and Song Society. <clears throat> and somebody in about 1970 had the brilliant idea of going to the other end of Cecil Sharp House, getting the Edison Bell phonograph that lived there, and it worked. So they put these, uh, they, they were actually, this cylinder wasn't the only one in the cardboard box, there were about a hundred others. All stuff recorded before the First World War. Um, I find that sort of thing absolutely enormously exciting. <laughs> sang this song is a woman called Harriet Verrill, who was a woman who sang lots of songs to Vaughan Williams. Um, and it's one of those women walking out on the street, all, all uh, in the road, all on her own. It's quite obviously available songs. <laughs> um, uh, in this case, she is standing apparently innocently by the side of the road holding a basket and these two sailors walk by on, uh, on, home from, uh, on their way home from leave. <coughs> um, I mean, on their way home, having had some leave, I really can't talk today, can I? <laughs> you know what I mean. Um, they're on their way home, they're on leave, and they see this girl and they say, hello, darling, like they do, and she says, hello, and she, they say, what's in the basket then? And she says, eggs, and they say, ooh. How about if me and my mate carry them? She says, you'll run away. And they say, who, us? <laughs> so she says, all right, gives them the basket, and they run away. <laughs> they get to the pub where they've told her they're going to be. If in, if in but by some mischance, they should happen to walk just a little bit faster than she can. And uh, they rush into the pub and go, hee, 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 hee. How about some breakfast, landlord? Here's the eggs. And they hand them landlord the eggs. He goes into the kitchen to start cooking it all up and he comes up out and he says, sorry chaps, I've got the basket all right, there's no eggs in the basket, there's a baby. It's not mine, they Upstairs. 
touch this young Nancy, our dearest Nancy, that had taken to bed the last whistle tide. We got this young child since I played your fancy. So now, gay fiddler, you've got to pay. That child's not ours, lovely Nancy. He's no babe of mine, nor no friends beside. Here is fifty golds I'll give anybody. And she'll take care of this little child. Oh, I will take it, I'll kindly treat it. If you will say all my money's paid. Young man went up to the basket. He's kicked it around and around the floor. Oh, since it is done, I will sure I pay it. But damn me if I do me eggs Short song. It's um, gets to the point. I learned it from a man called Bert Lloyd a long time ago. Um, and if you want to sing, likewise, yeah. who if you don't? It's a song called Oh Dear Oh. As I went out one summer's day to view the fields and the leaves were springing, I met two maids all on the way, and one of them her hands was ringing, and all of our conversation was my husband's got no courage in him. Oh dear oh, oh dear oh, my husband's got no courage in him. Oh dear oh. For seven long years I made his bed, for six of them I laid again him. This morning I rose with my maiden head, shows he's got no courage in him. Oh dear oh, oh dear oh, shows he's got no courage in him. Oh dear oh. All sorts of meats I do preserve, all sorts of drinks that's fitting for him. Oyster pie and rhubarb too, but that don't put no courage in him. Oh dear oh, oh dear oh, but well that don't put no courage in him. Oh dear oh. I wish to God that he was dead and in his grave I'd quickly lay him And then I'd find a nice young man that's got a bit of courage in him Oh dear oh, oh dear oh, that's got a bit of courage in him Oh dear oh Come all your mates, where'er you be Don't you marry a man before you try him or else you'll sing your song like me. My husband's got no courage in him. Oh dear, oh, oh dear, oh. My husband's got no courage in him. Oh dear, oh.
Um, the song's a bit of a favourite, actually, so... I'm sure, I'm sure some of you know it, but if you don't...16, 17 years old. And uh, he has a, a mate who's also about 16 or 17 years old called John. Bill and John live in the woods. And um, <clears throat> they get on just fine as long as John remembers that Bill is top dog. Um, and the beginning of the so at the beginning of the song, John is being reminded who is top dog. And the way Bill is doing it is by bragging about his sexual conquests. And he points airily, to say arbitrarily, woman that said, well, she just happens to be the first. And you have to take her these two gifts of a single, uh, single glove and a ring. And you must tell her that she has to come to the woods and meet me and not tell anybody. John refuses to have anything to do with this, which enrages Bill, so he starts with the, the brow beating, and finally, for the sake of a quiet life, John agrees. And he takes the glove, and he takes the ring, and he goes to the door, and he beats on the door, and she comes to the door, and he blurts out the message. Here's the glove, here's the ring, go and meet Bill in the woods, don't tell anybody. And she laughs, and he's quite surprised. And uh, there is something that um, Bill hasn't told John. <coughs> There's something that she hasn't told her husband. And her husband is standing behind the door at that very moment. He's not laughing at all. So. Silver grey. 
Jonathan stood in the shadow, an angry man was he. I never knew the man that my love loved more than me. Saeed's gone down the harbour, he dressed in her array. Like some woman, he's gone down to find this young Billy. Thank you. 
fell in love with a factory pain. If I could file a claim for win, I would sit beside her and her feet by steam. Oh, my father too is scornful, said, How can you fancy a factory pain when you can have that is fine and gay and dressed like unto the Queen of May? As for your fine girls, I don't care If I could but enjoy my dear And go to the factory all the day She and I keep our shuttles in play For I went to my love's bedroom door Speak, nor yet get into the pleasant bed where my love lay in. How can you say it's a pleasant bed when none lies there but a factory maid? A factory maid, though where she be, blessed is the man that enjoys she. South Africa. I'm sure some of you know that, but some of you maybe don't. So it is. Um, Tina is Margaret Thatcher. <laughs> it comes from, uh, from her habit of saying there is no alternative. <laughs> um, I don't know who it was who spotted her habit of saying that, but whoever it was. 
uh, what else is to know? Um, Polesmore is Polesmore Prison. A shambok is a whip that's made out of rhinoceros hide, <laughs> um, which is used for crowd control in the townships. Do you need to know, really? <clears throat> Um, a knowledgeable heckler once heckled and said, "That's no, all. It's hippopotamus hide." So I said it was hippopotamus the next, the next night, and another heckler said, "No, it's not." <laughs> <laughs> so, according to my according to my H. Ryder Haggard books that I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is right. <rather true. laughs> oh, yes, absolutely impeccable. <laughs> Cast in the flood, away your liberty as I come among you. I ride the ark on a sea of blood, they call me the great Azania. I soared like the dove, released in the air when they tossed me through the window, tied to a chair. I landed in the middle of Trafalgar Square. I come to visit all your bad dreams upon you. Now the first that I met when I came into land was the Grantham grocer's daughter. She cried aloud, how sorry I am. There wasn't anybody here who could have caught you. She crooned in my ear like I knew she could. A cabinet briefing on the misunderstood. Bathed my wounds in my very own blood, crawling on the world press to support her. Oh, the cameras rattled and the questions flew. Everybody sang a rule, Britannia. The cabinet jumped up two by two, joining in with their own memoranda. They went maximum leverage, minimum force. You get your dividend, but you've got to stay the course. They sang as they all trooped off to the house. God save our gracious Tina. around my body, I clearly was a threat to the nation. They knew that menace to life and limb was a matter of interpretation. They had me down at the dog track, running like the hare. I was huge on the replay screens right there. Crowds flung their hats in the air, marvelling at my acceleration. Oh, they heard me cry when a fellow man feeds the billy club a tattoo on me. They joined the brokers and crowded the eaves, jostling to get the best view of me. They sang summer little children and see how they run as the tear gas flew and the shambok sang. Still as the white ball necklace burned, they prayed out aloud for their piece of me. Oh, the bird men of Polesmore raged in the dark, ran man come to saddle up and ride them. The bird men of Polesmore built them an ark, no divine telegram to guide them. Radman shouted, Radman cajoled in the township jive on the photo call. The words of the bird then spangled the wall, a weeping tear gas diadem. It said, I am humanity, cast in the flood, wake your liberty as I come among you. I ride the ark on a sea of blood, they call me the great Azania. I saw like the dove released in the air, you left me for dead at the foot of the stair. And as I stand in the middle of Trafalgar Square, resurrections all around you.
Thieves. A lot of it's written in 18th century thieves slang. What is this to do with 1991, you ask? Probably quite rightly. <laughs> Here it is. I think it's a cracking little song.
Fisher was the, was the person who had the idea of sticking the, this words to the, uh, these words to this tune. The tune's a, um, a Breton drinking song, apparently, called The Song of Cider. Ain't half good. Like a lot of those Breton tunes, it ain't half good. <coughs> So she fitted it to these words, which are a, <coughs> they're a, a story about evil, basically. It's about the breaking of a spell. The spell has been laid. Uh, the song is called Willie's Lady. The spell has been laid on <coughs> Willie's Lady by Willie's mum um, because Willie's mum thinks she should have chosen Willie's wife for him. Right, he's been away and he's come back with an obviously foreign wife, and mum doesn't like it. So, mum plots to kill her. Really devastating means, really. What she does is she puts a spell on the girl saying she shall become pregnant, but she shall never give birth. And she puts, she, uh, <laughs> um, so there are four things that hold the spell on. They're apparently, they're apparently very obvious. But you have to remember that they are put on in a particular order, and they have to be removed in the same order for, for the spell to be broken. A master kid is a young Billy Goat. a house pet. It's a young one. They're all right then. They don't stink. They stink very well. <coughs> when they're little, they're actually great fun. They're smart. <coughs> okay. I don't think there's anything else you need to know. I'm telling you that about the uh, a master kid. In case you get to the end of this number of what a big nose and master kid. And it's the most, one of the most important things in the whole thing. Right, here we Turn to clay, and you will wed with another maid. And 
Shining says this weary man has back to his own true love. He's called again. I wish my life was at an end.
Simon. Simon. How much time is there? Oh, all right. Good all right. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
is a, um, I have a request for this. It's, uh, it's a thing called company policy. Thank you. 